Hi, everybody, and welcome to Mackie CRX Series Multimedia Studio Monitors Live Presentation. I'm Brad Gagne, a product specialist at Mackie, and we're coming to you from the virtual NAM Believe in Music event. We have a ton of great stuff planned for you, so thank you for joining us. Please be sure to follow us online. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Mackie Gear, and also visit our website, Mackie.com, for more details about your favorite Mackie products. Make sure you stick around until the end because anyone here who is attending NAM Believe in Music and is participating in the event chat will be eligible for our giveaway. We're going to be giving away a pair of CR8X Bluetooth Multimedia Studio Monitors to one lucky person. And after this event, our special guest will be giving away a pair of CR8X Bluetooth Multimedia Studio Monitors as well. We'll give you the full details on how you can enter to win that pair at the end of this event, so stay tuned. Joining us shortly is a very special guest, Wavy Wayne, who's a fellow Macoid and a user of our products. We can't wait to hear his thoughts on these. But before we do that, I'm going to invite on the product manager for the CRX Studio Monitors, Craig Reeves. Hey, guys. What's happening, Craig? What's up, Brad? How are you, man? I am excellent. Thanks for joining I, us I, today. I get to do NAM in, uh, in my comfy home instead of in uh anaheim so uh are yeah. you still wearing slippers right now oh yeah oh right. yeah and you wear and you are wearing <laughs> pajama pants yes no 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 i'm wearing actual pant pants oh okay good just check yeah pant <laughs> check slippers i had to check. dress up for the stream so you know <laughs> good. well how about we give our audience a rundown on the crx uh studio monitors let's do it all right, let's run with that. Share that beautiful bean presentation. Sound like you mean it. All right. <laughs> so um, the all new CRX series monitors are a complete refresh and expansion of Mackie's best selling studio monitors, adding four new models and offering a sleek new look and a step up in performance and sound quality. Craig, can you kind of give us some of those improvements from the CR models to the CRX? Sure. So uh, I think probably the biggest change is the one that, that you can see is we really stepped up the ID and and uh, made a change to the way these things look. Um, uh, it's got a brushed metal front now. Uh, the green piping is around the outer edge. And uh, the Running Man logo is now backlit and a button in uh, the Bluetooth models. So that's how you actually control your Bluetooth. Um, some of the under, hoods, under the hood stuff is that uh, we changed the architecture from class AB to class D. And we increased the power uh, starting with the CRX5s. So... Um, they're actually the, where they used to be 50 watts. Now they're 80 watts. What about some of that improved accuracy and clarity, like the frequency response on these, the upgrade and the drivers? And the so it, it's it's a it's all new driver package. Uh, both the the high frequency and the woofer uh, are both new speakers. And uh, yeah, we spent a lot of time voicing these things too. We wanted them to be consistent with the previous CR because we have a ton. We have a huge installed user base there and we have a yeah. lot of people who really like that sound. But uh, we wanted to improve on that and especially improve on um, the, the loudness and uh, some of the high frequency clarity. So uh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Craig, for that. Yes, so of some, some of the models uh, that we have that you guys are familiar with, we've got the 3-inch, the CR3X, CR4X, CR5X, and these all come in non-Bluetooth and Bluetooth models now. Uh, 50 watts for the 3 and 4, and then 80 watts for the 5. All of them share a 1-inch Silk Dome tweeters um, and some of those, all those features that Craig just touched on. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about some of the newer models that we offer, like the 8, which we'll be giving away, and our subwoofer? Uh, big dogs. So uh, <laughs> I, I really wanted a set of 8-inch monitors, and so uh, that's the latest addition to the CRX lineup is, uh, is that we decided to add the 8s. The 8s come with Bluetooth only. There's not a non-Bluetooth version of them this year. Uh, we're doing the same thing that we did with the five when we initially released uh, the CR. Um, 
And so uh, we also released a subwoofer. And uh, the subwoofer is wonderful. Not only does is it like the perfect complement to especially the three through fives, but uh, also the subwoofer has Bluetooth on it. So if you've got a smaller pair of CR speakers with no Bluetooth, or if you've got any other monitor that you want uh, a subwoofer for and you would like to add Bluetooth to, this CR8S XBT actually adds Bluetooth to your existing monitors as well. Then we've got a great remote. Uh, the remote allows you to control both the overall volume of the system as well as the sub independently. So uh, you can control the, the amount of uh, audio that that sub is putting out which is yeah. great for apartment dwellers or, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think referencing your mix too. I actually use the sub sure. in my studio and it's nice to roll it out for a minute. And then, uh, you know, and we'll get into some of the details with the crossover and, and that's kind of what we wanted to touch on in the next slide here was a little more in depth of into the uh, subwoofer there. <clears throat> so the uh, low end, uh, it's 200 watts, Class D amplification, the uh, CR8S XBT Bluetooth subwoofer. Um, like we said, it adds Bluetooth, uh, and you've got the volume control there, what we were just touching on, uh, the remote that allows you separate control from your low end, from your mains. And uh, that Running Man logo there is actually doubles up as the power indication when it's turned on, it will uh, yep. light up. And then it also, uh, we press that to engage the uh, Bluetooth. So that way, uh, Bluetooth connectivity, so you can link your Bluetooth compatible device to the subwoofer. And like Craig was touching on, it's if you already have a set of desktop speakers that you're using and you want to add Bluetooth into your system, you could purchase the subwoofer and add that into any system. Of course, it's going to pair uh, beautifully with our CR models, but uh, any any set of speakers you could use with the subwoofer. For sure. Um, can you kind of go over some of the IO connections on the back, what we've got on these from the sub and, uh, the top boxes? Sure. So, uh, we support, uh, TRS and RCA, um, which will pretty much cover, you know, you've got your balanced and your unbalanced. It'll pretty much cover you know, any set of monitors that you want to plug into the thing. Um, we have, uh, a variable crossover point and a uh, phase switch, uh, on the back as well. So, uh, you've got that control. Um, and it, yeah, we've got, uh, uh, everything clearly, clearly labeled here. The Jack that is, uh, kind of on the bottom off by itself is the Jack for the, uh, CRDV remote. And so that allows you, you just plug that in. It's just a standard TRS. You just plug it in, you put the remote on your desktop and you've got that remote control of your stuff <laughs> as well. Beautiful. Yeah. You got the polarity switch on there on the top boxes. You're, you'll get that balanced quarter inch as well as the unbalanced RCA. And uh, it comes with raw wire to connect the power speaker to the passive for the top boxes. And you have that uh, left, right placement switch, which is pretty nice too. So if you're left-handed, you can set the uh, speaker on your left-handed side and you can control the volume there and you'll still get your stereo mix from left and right with that placement switch, which is really nice to have. Um, yeah, but the sub, the crossover, you know, that's a beautiful thing to have going in and coming out of the sub and running that to your main boxes. Uh, really, so all your low end is only getting handled uh, in the subwoofer. The rest of those frequencies going up to the top really cleans yep. up and great for mixing and the desktop remote really gives you that flexibility to hear the sounds that you need at that time to make the correct adjustments that you need when you're mixing. So perfect little, uh, home studio system. All right. Now want to touch on some of the software that's included. We have professional software that you get with these boxes. So, if you're looking to start your studio, this is a great place to start. You're going to get Pro Tools first and Waveform OEM. So you get not just one software, you get two. 
Of course, Pro Tools is the industry standard for recording. If you go to any professional studio, they're going to be using Pro Tools. Uh, not only do we give you these free softwares, but they actually include a plugin bundle. Pro Tools is going to give you the musician's collection, um, which includes 23 plugins like BBD Delay, 11 Light, 304 EEQ, 304 C Compressor. Um, and then Waveform is a full featured DAW that's going to uh, give you 16 powerful plugins like Equalizer, Compressor, Reverber 8, and Limiter. This is over a $500 value in just the plugins alone that you get included with the speakers out of the box. So it's a great and feature. I just want to add to that uh, that bundle for Pro Tools is exclusive to Mackie. Uh, Avid actually has other bundles, but... Uh, uh, I, I really like the composition of our bundle, especially those uh, those uh, EQ and com that EQ and compressor plugin. So yeah, those plugins are nice, and they'll definitely come in handy. I'm sure Wavy's probably got a couple tutorials on those already. So All right, <laughs> we'll have to ask him about it when he comes on. All right. So speaking of which. Yeah, he's coming right up. So CRX, that's that's the uh, Creative Reference Multimedia Monitors. Uh, Be Bold, Sound Amazing, that's CRX uh, series right there. So that's kind of uh, just a brief introduction into that. And with that, I'd like to bring on our special guest. So it brings me great pleasure to introduce an iconic YouTube star, producer, and audio engineer, Wavy Wayne. Cool. Come on. I Wayne, what's up, man? What's up? What's up, Wavy? Brad, I appreciate you. What's up, Craig? How you doing? I see that YouTube yeah, award in the background too. Oh, is, is with, the, with the oh. with its own light. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting it done. Yeah, that's nice. Oh that man, I gotta keep her keep her lit, you know. <laughs> I do this for the, for the tube. What's up, everybody? <laughs> I see some of my Wavy Seals elites over in the chat. So big shout out to all the Wavy Seals elite who came in and checked in. Anybody from the channel, I appreciate y'all coming through on this. Man, thank you, Wavy, for joining us. We really appreciate you being here. Um, for those that don't know you or haven't seen you online or watched any of your tutorials, can you start off by telling us a little bit more about what you do? Oh, man, if you haven't seen me, then you probably haven't been online. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, <what> I'm, <laughs> I'm just talking, man. I'm just playing with y'all, man. But um, basically, I'm a, a recording and mix engineer. I have a YouTube channel, Wayne.Wave. You can find that on YouTube where I offer up uh, tutorials and uh, reviews of all type of different products. Um, you know, my aim is to just help everyone record and mix better and faster. And no matter where they're at, where, what point in their career they're in, man. So uh, that's that's my aim. And that's what you can find on my channel. Absolutely. Have you, uh, can you give us a little bit about your background in audio? Like where you, did you go to school and all that type of stuff? Oh, for sure, man. So I went to school in U city. Nah, y'all don't know about that. Shout out to all my people in U city. Uh, that's a school in St. Louis where I'm from. But, um, after, uh, leaving U city and leaving my hometown, I went down to a uh, full cell university, which is a place where I'm sure a lot of y'all have heard of. Um, I, I studied recording and engineering there. And then moved right up to New York and, and started interning at Quad Studios, where I got to kind of really start my career and, and learn a lot from all kind of people, man. Working with a bunch of producers, uh, some of the top people I ran into. So like kind of like first day, you know, what I mean, you're in the fire uh, when you're at Quad Studios from Dipset, Jim Jones, man. I've done stuff with Future there and uh, Pitbull, man, just like pretty much anybody you could think of. Uh, so it's, it's been great, man. Are you so are you're also a certified Pro Tools instructor? Yeah. How did the, how did you get your certification in Pro Tools? Yeah, good question. So um, I am an instructor and I, I actually have a Pro Tools certification course um, that's going to be coming out where you can learn Pro Tools and get certified from me. So make sure that if you are interested in that um, nice. in the next couple of weeks, actually, I'm going to be launching that. So go visit my website and make sure you all subscribe to everything. But um, I got introduced to Pro Tools. Um, as a as a, a team when i first started recording but really at full sale uh they they taught us pro tools they had the opportunity to get certified and for me uh certification was um super important because it's something that you could use on your resume help you to differentiate yourself from all the competition and everyone else who's going to be um going for the same internships and positions that right. i was going to be going for and it's, it's not an easy test at all you know is you definitely got to apply yourself so 
um, I knew that that was something that I could attain. Right. Um, and I feel like anybody could do it if you apply yourself. And that's why it's important, because most people just don't take the initiative to uh, to go so hard. Man, what's up, Tarsia? Um, <laughs> nice. Take that initiative. So by doing it, uh, I knew that I could differentiate myself, even if I didn't have um, like the skills at mixing at first or the best, you know, recording skills. I could learn to conquer my dog. And so that's what I really focused right. on. My wife in the building. What's up, boo? <laughs> <laughs> So and and Quad Studios, I'm sure, and all the other studios that you work at, they're all most likely probably running Pro Tools. I oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah. The Pro Tools on on all the you know main systems. You know, occasionally you'll get a you uh, producer or something. They'd have their laptop. They may be working on something else there. But when it comes to professional recording and mixing, I, I've not been many places where they don't have Pro Tools. <laughs> And your I tutorials are a studio that didn't have Pro Tools, besides, you know, maybe like a buddy's basement or something. <laughs> Wayne, let me ask you because, um, uh, you know, I might be sh telling tales here. I might be uh, showing how long in the tooth I am. But, uh, you know, I can remember when uh, I was using Pro Tools regularly. Um, there were there weren't a lot of tools in Pro Tools for adjusting beats and uh, you know like you know they came out with the yeah. Beat Doctor first and then they evolved that. Um, do you find that people are adopting Pro Tools more to start working in beats or are they doing something like uh, Ableton and then exporting to like FL or? Yeah, that's a good question, Craig. I feel like most producers don't initially gravitate towards pro tools and i definitely understand that like when you open it up it's blank slate is and you yeah. know they're trying to get better but it's they there are other programs that i feel will help someone who's wanting to make beats and they'll feel much more comfortable than like an ableton fl studio even logic has a great right. um, suite of production so um but pro tools you know for people who like are into using hardware for their production that's where I will find that a lot more people are using Pro Tools for that. So if you like to still use analog MPC sets and MPCs, you know, you could right. Pro Tools still finds its way there. Um, and, and and don't sleep though. Pro Tools has some great virtual instruments like Expand Two. Yeah, like, you can get if you can get a lot going on in there. Structure is a great sampler. Like I use that, you know, whenever I need to. But um, yeah, I just most most people will kind of gravitate to other DAWs. Um, is starting at FL. Yeah, I never, I never used FL because I never owned a FL, PC. FL, man, that's another <laughs> one. That's a, you know, it's kind of hard to to pass up on on FL Studio, man. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Jean Marie uh, over there at FL Studio. That is uh, a great package to start with. You get so much power, and they've got so many tiers that you know you can start off with. You know, I think. Five ninety nine or nine ninety nine, and from there you can take it to whatever. So, yeah, no, I think it's, it's probably good to separate the two. So, producing if you're laying down MIDI tracks and stuff like that, then you know there's some other softwares that are probably a little more leaning towards that way. But for recording engineers, for mixing, if you're a guitar player and you want to track in your guitar and you want to record some vocals over it, um, if you're mixing multiple tracks at once, I mean, Pro Tools is the industry standard uh, for mixing and stuff like that. So. Absolutely. How? And I, I feel like if you ever plan to work in the industry outside of just your own projects on your own computer, you have to know Pro Tools. Like you All just right. have to. If you plan to walk in anybody's studio post production, if you want to work on sound for a film or anything like that, you got to know Pro Tools. And that's that's like one of the sweet things with our monitors. We offer that software and get your foot into the door learning that industry standard software. I mean, how long have you been mixing and mastering audio now, Wavy? <laughs> Man, I have been doing this, uh, let's see, since I was a kid, like working and recording in Audacity. I was probably about 12 years old recording myself and, and I've never stopped since then. So um, it's been a, a long journey. I've now professionally you know, when did I start getting paid for it? Let me see. How old am I now? Maybe close to what, 12, 13 years, somewhere around there uh, as a professional. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Yeah. So I, I'm sure you've used a lot of different gear. Can you tell us about uh, some of the gear that you've used in regards to like studio monitors? Oh, word up, man. Actually, it's funny because the 
when I first interned at Quad Studios, as soon as I worked in the walked in the studio, A, I saw a pack a pair of Mackie HR 824s. Um hey, so that was, that's one of the first uh, studio monitors. It was the, the HR 824s. NS tens and they had some uh uh what's those uh Osbergers uh, uh yeah, yeah. the main so um if I knew that if Mackie was good enough to be sitting on that uh, SSL then I could probably get rid of it you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but yeah I've used all kind of uh you know all kind of gear but I yeah that's that was kind of my introduction there yeah that's pretty sweet going to Quad Studios and seeing a pair of HR eight twenty four sitting on the desk there I mean that's yeah. That's awesome just to kind of see where, you know, Mackie's our humble beginnings of where we started over 30 years of experience in the pro audio uh, market, you know, just being innovative and creating. And so with your expertise and experience, can you tell us what you thought about our CR8X studio monitors? I know you had a you did an actual video on your YouTube channel about them. I mean, can yeah. you tell us what you thought about them? For sure, man. Um, initially, I think they look great. Like they they kind of just pot to look at nothing else has any color i got a couple of other, um, other monitors i've had on my desk and they all look the same you know yeah. <laughs> these monitors yeah. seem to stand out with the the green trim uh around it and the brushed metal face so that was cool to to see initially just coming out the box another thing coming out the box is i, I felt like i had everything i needed to set them up I didn't have to go out and buy any additional cables or anything like that, uh, which is great because you could, if you're a laptop producer or anything like that, I mean, you can set these up to your computer and not even have an interface. So like, I just feel like anybody who's um, starting out or if you are have a production studio, you need a, a spare set of monitors, um, like a you know another set to reference what you got going on. They, they're amazing for that. Did you get the eights? Which ones did you yeah, get? The HR eights, uh, uh, so, not the HR eights, the CR yeah. eight. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> then you actually got the like they even come with the uh, acoustic isolators, the foam isolators as well. It, so. That too. Yeah. So I, I when I set them up, like boom, they're they got everything that you need. Literally everything you need to just start and get working. Um, I also like the fact that they're Bluetooth because yeah. I actually I reference a lot of. Uh, uh, music coming from like you know my phone whatever i got on my phone and not only could i just listen to what's coming out of pro tools but if i had some track on my phone that i wanted to reference against when i'm mixing i could send it right over uh via bluetooth and not have to worry about any cables changing inputs and stuff like that so uh super uh useful for me yeah that's a sweet or someone else comes in the studio oh, yeah. and they want to show you a track they just you know from their phone instead of emailing it and sending it over we had one of our guests yesterday said that that was pretty sweet for him too. How did the uh, mix translate across other monitors? So if you've done a couple mixes on them, how did they translate across other monitors? Yeah, I feel like they're true. Um, you know, definitely a good monitor to to, to cross reference the the mixes. Um, I got what I needed. And another thing too, like I feel like on that monitor, um, the low mids are very telling. So like if you have any issues in those kind of low mid range areas you will find it on that monitor. Some of the even higher end monitors, they kind of mask that area a little bit to where you don't notice if you have issues there. Um, yeah. But I love to use that monitor and kind of jump over there and then it'll let me know if there's any low uh, mid issues. So that's something that I definitely was uh, excited to to use those for, for sure. Yeah, that's So you say you'd be able to get a professional mix using the CRX Studio monitors? Oh, for sure. I can get a professional mix using anything, man. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> stickers, right? Absolutely. Yeah, but, no, for sure, man. You can definitely get a, a professional mix using those monitors. It's just important too, man, that you you, you got to know them, right? You got to know your monitors. And the good thing about these monitors, especially with the Bluetooth and all the other um, uh, connectivities that you can have with it, you can even use them for like a home stereo. You can use yeah. them all the time and learn what things sound like on those monitors and Yes, they, they will work for you. Perfect. Yeah, I would say, I mean, this is a, a great option for aspiring engineers and home recording artists that not going to break the bank. When you purchase these, they come in the pair. So right. you get your stereo pair. You know, a lot of times you may have to buy two sets. You know, you don't budget for that. But a pair for these out of the box with the software included, it's a it's a wonderful package. Absolutely. Yeah. You get two, two speakers for the price of one, basically, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like all monitors should come as a pair. I really don't understand why you would sell them separately. I guess if you maybe you're doing a, a surround sound or something. All right, fine. 
But okay, <laughs> they should just have an option for pairs. That's, a, that's just my opinion. <laughs> I agree. So, how do we find your website? We're gonna there's a commercial or like a thing that you put together that's super sweet that we want to share with the audience. Sure. And uh, we kind of want you to plug that real quick before we play that. All right, cool. So what we're going to see here in a second is basically a, a commercial that I, I run for my templates. Hopefully you guys may have seen it before if you know you've been checking this stuff out. But I make recording and mixing templates that are designed to help you guys mix and record better, faster, um, especially all the creatives out there. Just kind of take some of that uh, uh, initial technical work out of your um, hands so that you can just be creative, focus on that, get your songs out faster without trying to learn how to master and mix before you can ever put a song out. I was talking to somebody the other day and they was like, man, we, we, I, I need those templates because if I spent all, waited until I could mix and waited until I could master, I would never put music out. And I, right. I took that like, yo, that's confirmation that that's what the templates are there for. And so, Wayne, uh, mm. let me ask too, because, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I found interesting was uh, that everyone in the chat should know is, these templates are not tied to a DAW. They're not tied to Pro Tools. They're yeah. not exclusive to, they will work with whatever DAW you are, are comfortable with working. And so that was one of the things I thought was really, really cool is, man, yeah. if I'm using FL Studio or Audition or whatever, you can still use those Wavy Wayne plugins I mean, uh, Wavy Wayne uh, uh, session files yeah. and get work done. And uh, yeah, yeah, very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So currently, the session templates are for uh, Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, and even Luna. Um, oh, and nice. But I do have uh, presets uh, using a Wave Studio Rack that can be used in any DAW that you can use Wave's plugins on, and that will give you. The full flavor of what you need anywhere and you can and the dope thing about that is you can if you're using the studio rack presets you can take it to any doll you know yep. yeah i think it's perfect too for aspiring artists rappers singers if you're you know it could be daunting tasks like you're saying getting started like you record your vocals and you're like man it it doesn't sound how i want it to sound you know <laughs> and then you're like you open up these plugins and there's all these knobs and stuff and you're like man i don't understand so watching your channel on youtube i've watched it several times and learned a lot of techniques and i went to school for sound engineering but i still learn love learning tips and tricks from you and stuff like that and the templates are a yeah. great starting place if you're tr looking for a sound uh, to get those and put those on your channel strips and, you know, kind of have some of the settings already adjusted for you. So right out of the box, you're already like 90% there, you know? So that's, that's where it's at. Exactly, man. Cause you know, we've, you, as a beginner, you open pro tools for the first time and it's like, now what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's nothing here. <laughs> well, you know, I, I load up my APC. I mean, uh, um, uh, my, uh, MPC and, uh, I load up like an 808 kit. And I'm like, okay, this is the 808 kit. That's the 808 base. Why doesn't it sound like the 808 base? Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, well, all of a sudden I can load up a template and I can see like, oh, this is my percussion slash drums. Oh, look, you know, here's the signal chain. Here's what I can, I can understand from there. I can see like, oh, I see what he did. He did, uh. <laughs> I mean, I come from the time when it was like, you know, reverse gates and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, basically what, what I would used to do, man, like and even before I even thought about, you know, making templates and making them available, like when I was interning at quad after everything was done and we clean it up, I would go and take the session files off and, and put them on my computer so I can go home and reverse engineer whatever they're doing. Like, okay, yeah. this is the vocal chain. This is how, you know, they set up and route their effects. So um, they're very useful. And also you can learn a lot just by kind of looking at the way some, someone else works, a professional. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's watch that Check video. That Roll that yeah. beam footage. There you go. <laughs> Producers and engineers have suffered for years on a quest to make industry quality songs. WavyWayne.com has custom session templates that will instantly transform your sound, no matter what DAW you are using. Get the industry quality sound you have been searching for now, so you can forget about the technology and get back to doing what you love. 
compatible with all digital audio workstations. Available for instant download yeah. at wavywayne.com. I got my money up and put myself on. Nice. nice. I get excited every time I see that. That's fire, <laughs> man. I know. I love that. It's on point. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to have a Q&A before we do our giveaway. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you drop Mars, them in the chat. Mars. Yes. Do and before we do the giveaway. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, make sure you guys uh, register at the NAM Believe in event and uh, – commenting in the chat. That's how you're eligible to be a part of the first giveaway that we're going to be doing here coming up shortly. We're giving away a pair of CR8X Bluetooth multimedia studio monitors. So we don't want to miss that. And we'll start running some of those questions. And the second giveaway after this giveaway, if you're not able to win the pair here, you can go to wavywayne.com forward slash pages forward slash giveaway two. Um, Follow that link and make sure you guys register and do everything there on that page. And that's going to make you eligible for the second giveaway. So if you don't win the pair here, you have another chance to do so. Um, so make sure you guys jump on that too. And we'll plug that again before we're, we're out. So let's start grabbing some uh, some comments here, some questions. Let's see what we got. Let's get it. Who's got a question? I would love to hear it, man. I see a, a, lot, of, a lot of people in there shouting me out, man. I definitely appreciate everybody that watches the channel and all of that so let's talk let's let's talk we got a couple just a couple things man wavy <laughs> up, hey, up, i'm just everyone popped in here just to to give shouts <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> okay here's a good one right here chris ryan do you mix using monitors or headphones both <laughs> both <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I, that's a good question. I mean, I use 90% is going to be in the monitors for sure. Um, but I always check in headphones. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah. that's a short answer. Sweet, simple and sweet. I agree. <laughs> monitors, but you got to check those headphones, man. I like pop filters you guys are using. What brand is that? Oh, well, that, that would happen to be a, I'm sorry, you guys had to hear that. That would happen to be the oh, the running Mackie PF one hundred filter. This uh, pop filter came out with our latest line of USB microphones, and so these should be. I think this should be at retailers now. Um, it's uh, hydrophobic, which is just a fancy way of saying it stops water <laughs> from going through it. It is a metal mesh. It's not uh, like foam or anything. And the great thing about that, I, I'm, I'm going to try and do this without sounding gross, is, uh, you know, microphones can get kind of nasty. And with the metal, it's very easy to wash, very easy to clean, and uh, uh, it stays good looking. And it, it works to control. It's acoustically transparent, works to control those plosives and... Uh, Great little accessory. Very nice. Yeah, I love it. So Daniel Eric's asked for a small apartment mixing, which combination of CRX with the sub? Um, who are you asking? Craig? Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, let me give you my opinion on that. Look, make yeah, find out your uh your noise ordinance in your apartment in your neighborhood. <laughs> and if it's and if there is none, get the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> like what? Exactly. Oh, they, they said uh, between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. we can be as loud as we want. Well, yeah, <laughs> be as loud as I want. You know? <laughs> yeah, right, I'm, 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 I'm using the fives, the fives and the sub, but you could pair them up with any one. So yeah. I like the fives. Um, that's currently what I'm using. I mean, they're all great, but for DJing, I would definitely get the eights and no sub. You don't really need the sub with the eights. I think you get about four to six hertz lower extension with the sub than the eights already give. So, you know, the there's not a, a ton of juice there where you really see the sub like walk away and do really well. 
Man, I, I tell you, I love the sub with the threes, and I know that sounds weak because threes, really? But, um, man, I, I, I love the way it sounds, and uh, it just uh, – the you, you cross them over in the right place, and they sound fantastic. So I would say while using the crossover, you're basically telling the frequencies, I only want the sub to reproduce – wherever the crossover point is and down below as low as the sub can reproduce. And that's basically going to handle all your low end while the rest of those frequencies go back to the top. So it gives your top end speakers a little more room to work because they're no longer trying to reproduce those lows. So it gives a little more clarity in the mains and things like that. So I, I would definitely say, you know, any system, if you wanted to get the pair of eights and add an extra, add the sub in there too, man, who doesn't want more low end, you know? Especially with 808 yeah. slap in and all that stuff. So, yeah. or if you like EDM or whatever, you know. Uh, Steve. I love that, little remote that comes with the subs too, well, that you can get for the subs. That's a great addition. Steve Absolutely. wants to know if these monitors will work well for DJing. Uh, I would say yes to a point. Like if you're in your, your place uh, or maybe even like having a small party. Um, you could definitely get by, uh, if you're trying to do something bigger, of course, you're going to want to transition to like more traditional PA gear, but, uh, especially for practice and stuff like that, that, I again, I love the eights for that. So Thomas Dyer, men's warehouse of speakers. You're going to love the way it sounds. <laughs> I Hey man, you get some fresh duds over there at Men's Warehouse, man. You know, you get suited up, get a custom <laughs> tailor, tailor fit. You know what I mean? Oh man, <laughs> I like that. That was cool. All right, Wavy Wayne, what will be the first thing you will focus on? On, I don't know. <laughs> Col Col Voldemort <laughs> nineteen yeah. was in the best, and we can all hug each other again. <laughs> What's the first thing I'm gonna focus on? Um, hmm. Uh, live events, man. That's something that I that I miss. You know, I have a, a company, Sauce Records, um, uh, that I run with my wife. Actually, a record label, and we we put on a lot of live events for up and coming artists to help give them exposure. Um, we haven't been able to do that at all this year, and I I can't wait to be able to produce shows again. So uh, that's definitely something I'm gonna be looking forward to. Man, that's sweet. Best way to check bass definition in a home studio. Um, I I don't know, Wavy. What, what do you think? I'm going to say with your ears. I mean, yeah. know I your system. and Sound treatment's good, though, too, like bass traps, That's things like I'm that. Right. That could help because sometimes, like, you're mixing in a room, and if it's in a plain, empty room like I'm in currently, then it's like your bass escapes to the corners, you're like, you're not maybe you're not hearing the mix as true as it is. So definitely some sound treatment will help your room. Uh, some sound panels and things like that. Uh, basically to, to really help tighten up those frequencies and not let them go all over the place and reflections. And um, that way you're getting a better, truer representation of what you're listening to. That definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, Hanley Hand, does room type dimension impact monitor sound? Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely it does. Oh, you need that room treatment, kind of like the same with the bass to actually to really hear what you're what's coming out of your monitors. You need to stop the reflections in your room. Otherwise, everything is just going to be a wash. Yep. So um, look up some acoustic treatment, control your reflections. You know, w one of the cool solutions that I saw too, uh, some some folks use is uh, instead of mounting the foam, you know, cause a lot of people live in apartments, right. And yeah. they can't really do anything permanent or, or use the, the traditional adhesive <laughs> with the foam. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. What you do is, is you use a uh, uh, foam core. You use, uh, it, it's, it's basically like, you know, overblown construction paper. It's, it's mm. like, plasticky so it, it it's firm you mount the foam on that and then you run like you know thumbtacks or something there and oh, it yeah. in place and you can put it up and take it down whenever you need to mm -hmm. so that's nice. a neat solution i've seen yeah that makes sense that's good aaron baxter wants to know do you find any latency when using bluetooth over the hardwired connection craig i'll let you take that one 
sure. Yeah, for sure. Bluetooth has uh, some processing latency. It's not a consistent uh, uh, number. It's going to depend on a lot of things, including what chipset your your transmitting device has and all that good stuff. There is definitely latency there. What I would say is uh, you want to use a hardwired connection for instances where you're performing against the speakers and latency is an issue. But if you're just listening for sound or, you know, listening for pleasure, yeah. if, if there's a 15 millisecond delay between what you do and, and what happens out of the, the speaker, it doesn't matter, you know, you're just streaming at that point, you know, yeah, you're you're laying just, down the tracks or whatever, you know, you definitely, that way you're not like your midis off, you know, you definitely want to run the hardwire connection, but so Chris Hogan asked, how flat is the frequency response? <laughs> so, uh, how flat is, are your, is your ear canal and your listening environment and everything else too? You know what I mean? Like, no, seriously, it's, it, it, so it is flat is such a loaded term, uh, uh, because there are things that you're trying to correct for when you talk about transducers and speakers, uh, maybe you've got a, a node that you're trying to correct for. And so when you look at the frequency response, uh, done one way, it doesn't look flat, but it sounds perfect. Uh, another thing that can happen and, and a, a thing that you'll see a lot is, you'll see people uh, posting uh, response plots that have been averaged down to such a degree that, you know, they're not realistic. They're way flatter than they, than the, the plot is way flatter than the speakers are. Um, and then sometimes you want speakers to sound a certain way. I can tell you definitely uh, for the CR speakers, we wanted um, we wanted them to be familial with uh, the the previous family of CR, and so there's definitely a sound there. But um, our feedback has been wonderful on these speakers, I can say, and uh, yeah. yeah, I think too is good to mention like mixing on. You're going to use, like if you've got Apple earbuds, your laptop speakers, some cheap stuff, you want to run your mix through all different types of monitors to make sure that your mix translates across, you know? So, uh, and like Wavy touched on earlier, you, you could learn your set of speakers, you know? You're going to be learning them as you play some of the favorite songs that you love. You're going to notice some of those frequencies or where that, that you need to make adjustments in your mix to complement uh, for what you're listening for. So using your ears is like the most important thing when you're mixing and being a sound engineer. The tools that we use are great and they'll help you get that job done. But, you know, your ears are, is where it's at. And you'll have to develop that over time with a lot of practice and a lot of listening and uh, stuff like that. But absolutely. So Ned Ship asked, uh, how do the CRX compare to Roland's M8s or to the Mackie HR624s? So the uh, M8s I am familiar with. And uh, um, I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a biased source, right? <laughs> I like the CRXs better. Um, but then again, op opinions vary, you know? Um, what about our, uh, fact that, you know, I'd be curious to know, I mean, this is our number one set of selling of studio monitors, you know, and comparable, there's a lot of people out there that are using the CRX, which you can gather reviews and things like that too. So we have a tried and true customer base that loves these speakers. That's, that's good to put out there as well. For sure. Yeah. All right. Wave, you've got a question for you. Who are some of the artists you've worked with? All right, some of the artists I've worked with. Um, write this one down, everybody. I'm, I'm gonna make sure y'all get this one. Lydia Caesar. All right, she's a huge singer songwriter. She's kind of cute too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Remember, right, your yeah. wife is in here. Oh, you that think? is my wife. Oh, <laughs> oh I got it. <laughs> Come on, Greg. That's you know. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
Let's see. Some of the artists, man, I spent a lot of time working with Dipset, Jim Jones, Joel Santana, uh, Cameron. Um, I've also worked with Future, Ashanti, uh, Dave East, uh, Fat Trail. Um, who, who else did I have in here uh, recently? Um, the guy from Detroit. Can't think of his name right now. It's Bloop. But um, yeah, I've I've worked with a lot of people, man. Back to Kid Capri. I've done stuff with Kid. Um, Yo Gotti. Yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> what sparked your interest in becoming an engineer? Uh, Tarsia, that's a good question. Um, so Tarsia, shout out to you because she's actually one of the uh, Wavy Seals elites. Uh, she's a, a, a dope uh, producer and engineer uh in our own right um and but what sparked my interest was going to the actual studio and seeing adam long's uh enthusiasm about recording man and so i don't know if i ever told uh i, I might have mentioned this story once or twice but adam long he's a, a a mix engineer recording engineer here um in st louis but when i was about 15 years old i was an artist as a, a kid and i went to the studio where he was recording and he was just so enthusiastic about everything. He was so knowledgeable about everything that I, I really got more attracted to the gear and the process of recording um, more than uh, I did about, you know, working uh, as a, as an artist. And plus I, I figured too, that it'll be a, uh, it's probably more lucrative in the, in the beginning, you know, it's kind of more of a guaranteed way to have a job in the music industry <laughs> if I go down this route. But um, really I was, I was so uh, inspired by Adam uh, and, and when we first met. And uh, yeah, that really sparked a lot of my interest for real. Nice. Not only that, I, I, I kind of had to learn to, because we, we have to you know, too. You're probably mixing a lot of your own work and because you started off as an aspiring artist yourself. And I'm sure you probably still do stuff like that, too. But, you yeah. know, like going to the studio and you're spending a couple hundred bucks, you know, for like an hour or so. And it's like, man, I could need to learn how to do this so I could save a couple of dollars and, you know, figure out how to do it. And then it just goes into something from there. Right. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I, from the beginning, I was recording myself, you know, I was using audacity and Sony acid and, and all kind of, you know, whatever free. Uh, cool software. Intro. <laughs> cool yeah. intro, everything free that I could download and, and record. And I had like the little uh, skinny white microphone that you use for like webcams, web calls and stuff that'll just a little on a little bendable uh, stand. So I would record into that, man. And, and that's really where it started and just evolving and wanting to get better um, at what I was doing myself. And so, uh, yeah, and that, that just led to recording my friends and other people around and then, you know, went to full sale and made it a career. So here's another good question. Would you still recommend the sub and the eight inch monitors in a small space or would that introduce problematic reflections? Again, I think the sound treatment is important. Right. Yeah. Um, really sound treating your room and probably pulling the speakers a little bit away from the wall. You don't want them like smashed on the back of the wall, you know, give them a little room to breathe a little bit. And, uh, but, and they come with the isolation pads for your desk. So that helps a lot too. Um, I'm using the current, I'm in a, like a regular size room, kind of small, I would say. And I use the fives in the, in the sub and it's fine. You know, I love it. You got to treat your room though. You have to address the early reflections, no matter what monitors you go with five, eight, 10, you know, you have to address those issues. Um, I personally, I love mixing on uh, smaller monitors. Five inch is great um, to, to mix on. So, you know, is it's going to be a, a choice that you have to make. Absolutely. So we're going to take like one or two more questions and then we're going to do the giveaway. Uh, Darius uh, says, have you set up your new analog gear yet? Specifically your new digital patch bay. Ooh. Yeah. Good question, Darius. First, I'm going to shout out my man, Justin and the other Wavy Seals elites that's in the chat. I see y'all in there holding it down for the dog pound. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but Darius, uh, yes, actually, Right behind me, I have my patch. I got the Flock Audio patch. It has been uh, great. It's been a great experience. I'm running. I'm using the Neve 8816 as my summon mixer now. I've nice. been working on some mixes uh, this week uh, where I'm using this new setup. And yeah, man, uh, I yes. love the hybrid life now, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> so we're going to get some videos, right? Some tutorials on your... How, where do they find you on YouTube for those that don't know? 
Yep. So you can on YouTube search in Wayne dot wave like the audio file. Just Wayne dot W A V. Put that into your search bar. Um, hit the subscribe button. Turn on the notifications. And go watch every video from the beginning, and you'll be you know a, a Jedi in no time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The 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 uh, analog patch the digitally controlled analog patch bay is is dope. It's definitely a game changer, um, and and it helps to make this hybrid setup a whole lot easier because you know I don't want to be fooling around with patch bays and recalling stuff. I've done that and I got away from that for a reason. Uh, yeah. But now that the game is changing and making it a whole lot easier, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like uh, having a problem with signal flow and finding out that you half patch something or Man, you got you them just, right. Exactly. Or the, the patch cable's gone bad yeah. or, or something. You, you, yeah. It's, it's always bad. fun. <laughs> we got Marcus Price wanting to know if the CRX speakers will release in different color variants in the future. Uh, would love to see an all white version for my setup. Well, Marcus, it is so funny that you say that because we got them. Mackie actually yeah. sells direct to consumer, and we have an all white set and an all green set, like a what? Uh, I would say like a gamery kind of yeah, yeah. So uh, we have those available on our website right now. Pull the trigger, man. Go uh, log into Mackie.com and. Uh, that green set sounds fire. Shout out to 16 Life Records in the comment for it, putting Wayne.aac. Stop it. On PlayStation, uh, my gamer tag is actually Wayne.mp3 if anybody's looking for me. Oh, nice. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool, man. So we're going to do the giveaway. And I uh, want to thank again everybody that uh, joined us today and thank our special guest, Wavy Wayne. And you guys definitely follow him on YouTube, subscribe to his channel, like his channel. Definitely follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Mackie Gear and uh, check out all our latest products at Mackie.com. Um, so wavywayne.com where you can get all those uh, preset channel strips that he creates for you guys. If you're looking for a certain tone, you can find that at his website. Um, and then we're going to do this giveaway real quick, and then we're going to do uh, give you all the details and information to get this into the second giveaway, all right? Yeah. So let's get a drum roll going here. And the winner is... The winner is Steve. Steve you had a question for us. All right. All right. All right. Congratulations, Steve, congratulations Steve. man. Enjoy your new pair of uh, studio monitors. Sweet. Absolutely. All right. Congratulations, Steve. And then we've got one more giveaway and uh, you've got to register over at Wavy's website. Let's put that up on the, on the screen here for our audience. Uh, there it is right there. So wavy www.wavywayne.com forward slash pages forward slash giveaway two. make sure you guys go over there. There should be a link um, up in the, uh, the chat. You guys uh, hit that link, go over there and register and uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel, follow him for all the tutorials and everything like that. And, and this is how you guys are going to get registered in for the giveaway. So again, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. we got another one coming up here shortly. So we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Brad and Craig. And thanks, 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 Wavy. All right.